Hello and welcome to our first missions podcast. We don't really have a name for it yet, but we do have the content for it, which is talking about missions and all the awesome stories we've heard and conversations we've had with other missionaries and and uh, just actually I'm, I'm here with Pastor JC of Gospel Lighthouse Church in Blyville, Arkansas, joining me today and and um, we actually had a conversation with a missionary. Uh, a couple weeks ago and uh just over lunch and lit both of our fires <laughs> we were just excited and pumped and ready to hit the field immediately and uh i remember i had to fly back to atlanta after that and uh called you up and i, I listened to some other missions podcasts they were just fired up and uh their podcast would just kind of put me to sleep as all statistics and how to's and all this stuff and i just thought man i i called you up and so we got to do a podcast, <laughs> something different, man. We got to we got to tell these stories that fired us up, right? And uh and uh relay that to other people and let them have a chance to hear it. So just, anyway, that's kind of w- where we're starting out here. So, well, well, my side, Brandon, I guess you could say is uh, I'm really glad that you're doing this because it's it's going I'm going to be able to look back at this and maybe others that will venture out into the mission field and. Uh, be a way of video jur- or, or audio journaling your where you started from and how you felt all the anxiety all the feelings and maybe there's fear because uh, you don't know you've never been to another country you don't know how to ha- act even uh, and so uh, basically all I have to go on is just is the bottom line is faith and just believing that the Lord has has sent me and given me an opportunity to go and to to be a part of something that's a lot bigger than what I'm doing at Gospel Lighthouse Church, as, as far as uh, pastoring there in the local, uh, in the local community. Yeah, that's part of the reason I wanted to have you as my first guest because I've uh, part of my dream is to take people to the missions field and and uh, let them experience that, especially the first time. This is actually your first trip out right. of the country, first right. international missions trip, and uh, I, you know, I remember the first time I went overseas. I think it was in a Hungary and Romania and Eastern uh, Europe and and all that and that's back in high school so I uh, barely remember you know I remember parts of it but I don't remember like my thought process right so that's part of what I just kind of want to detail I remember when I started traveling really traveling a lot more four or five years ago um, the first trip I went on signing that paperwork basically saying uh, you know I'm responsible for myself yes okay um, if you die, <laughs> uh, you can't, uh, your family can't sue us. <laughs> uh, you know, here's uh how do you want us to get your body back to the United States? Yeah. If you die, you know, answering those questions is a little, uh, sets heavy on you uh, immediately. You're thinking, okay, you know, I, we want to have fun, but this is serious. Like right, it's not, this it's has not to be a, something that we're willing to. Yeah. Put it on the line if if that's what it's called to do. Right, it's not it's not vacation. Right, it's uh, missions. And you know, you bring up so many that initial that that's the initial dynamic of selflessness and saying that I'm I'm willing to go to another another country. I'm willing to take the risk, even if it means my life. And I'm willing to you know do all these things. It's going to cost me something. And I think that's exactly what Jesus was saying about bearing a cross. You know. And and being willing to go, as you know, Matthew twenty eight says to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy, the Holy Ghost. And then it says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Lo, I am with you even always, even until the end of the world. And so that's that's kind of the commission, isn't it, Brandon? That um, God is God is wanting us to go, and if it means to go across the street to our neighbor, then we need to go across the street to our neighbor. Right. Or if it means to venture out and go to Honduras or go to Malawi, wherever God sends us, we have to have a willingness to say, okay, God, I'm going. And and in in that willingness, we have to make the calculation that there is, there's dangerous, we're living in dangerous times. There's a propensity for any kind of uh, negative activity. There's always nefarious people that want to do Americans harm but again he tells us to go and he says he's with us 
wherever, wherever we go, go into the nations. And so um, I'm really excited about this. I'm a, I'm a little nervous to be transparent before you because I have never done this before. Now, I've pastored in communities where there's been upwards to 80% Hispanic. I, I pastor currently right now in a community where it's 60% African American. And so I, as, as speaking as culture, I know a little bit, but I don't know it all. And I won't know it until I travel to these other places. And I just think it's a tremendous privilege and, a, and a, uh, just an awesome, awesome opportunity to preach the gospel and to, and to see what it's like. You know, not just to see what it's like, but to experience it, experience mm -hmm. it and not so much that I'm a tourist, but I'm experiencing it as a as a pastor and as a uh, someone who loves God and loves people. And that's that's our bottom line. That's our motto. At Gospel Lighthouse Church. People are our greatest investment and we should never underestimate the power of a single person. And so regardless of wherever they're at, people are so important to God that. God sent his own son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for people. That's how valuable people are. And we got to see that value. And I think this is an excellent uh, opportunity for me to be able to see value yeah. and to value life, you know. And if it means in a third world country, then it means in a third world country. But that's that's the bottom line. And I, I just I just really, I'm, I, like I said, I'm a little nervous about it. Um, what are some of your... Some of questions or thoughts, like what are your... Well, then let's just, you know, we can go back to the beginning, you know, when um, I, when you had approached me and you asked me about going and I said, yeah, I'm, I'm gung-ho about going, but then the thought of being away from your comfort zone, mm -hmm. being away from the normal commodities of life and having a family, having children, uh, having my beautiful wife uh, and knowing that there's that chance that, you know, something could happen, but I may never see them again or they may never see me again. You know, that's just a part of it because we're going so far away. Um, that was to me, I think the, one of the most important things because I, I, I want my, I want to see my children grow up, sure. you know? And so thoughts like that, that may, you know, to other people may not seem important, but to me that's, that was part of it. I think a little bit of, um, anxiety on uh, going through the security and the customs, the normal things that everybody does every day, uh, given because we live in such a, uh, like I said, a nefarious world, people want to do people harm, uh, and going to an unknown land to me, with unknown tongues to me, you know, all those, all those things are it's a little bit to the fear of the unknown. I mean, pretty much. I mean, it all adds into... And, you know, it's like when I went and saw the Grand Canyon for the first time, uh, I was always told, pictures don't do it justice. Yeah. And absolutely. I mean, you have to be there to appreciate the beauty, even though it's just a big hole in the earth. Yeah. You appreciate the beauty of, of what God, God has created. And now that's the same thing. I've seen videos... I mean, international television, CNN, Fox News, you're always seeing things overseas, but you really don't know. Yeah, you're not really experiencing it. You're right. seeing an image that's kind of broadcast in your mind. Right. It's just you can make it. Yeah, and, it's, and you're not going to know until you go. You're right. not going to know until you go. And that's that, uh, that's that commission to go into all, to all the world yeah. and preach the gospel. What I like, too, about missions is that all those different elements that you're not used to in your everyday life, it causes you to focus. It causes you to think about, it's not. It's more than a word, mission trip. Right. It's we're on a mission. Right. We're here for a purpose. Right. We're here for whatever it may be. I mean, you might be building something, you might be feeding the you know people that are starving or whatever the case may be to, to get to that point of sharing Jesus. Uh, and make an impact there, but it's funny when you come back, and I and I, you know, I'm I'm interested. We're gonna do another podcast when you get back, just to kind of see, see the change. Yeah, see the change. Yeah. But um, when you come back to your normal life, you kind of start realizing um, we should be living like that here. 
There you go. Like we we've been focused, and that was my. And we're on a mission right. there. We should be on it. We are on a mission here. If we're call ourselves Christians, right? Then we are on a mission. We've been sent across the street, like we have been to a different world. So it's just kind of funny to get in that other mindset. It kind of forces you to focus in that element, and then when you come back, hopefully that comes back with you. And you see that a lot from from teams that go, especially the first time, and you're like. Wow, you know, we could be living life totally different if our goal right. was to continue to find ways to reach people. Right. And, and Brendan, that's exactly the thing that, you know, I, it took me seven hours to drive from Blyville to Atlanta. And that was a thing that I kept thinking of. If you were to, uh, you know, say, what is, the, what is the one thing that you think this is, this is what this conversation is about? Yeah you're kind of thinking, what is one thing you think that is going to change, that's going to bring change? And that was one of them because, you know, I life is different there. And with a flip of a switch, we have electricity and we can see lights. And, we have, and I think about all the screens that we have in our home. And I think about all how, how life seems so easy for us. Mm -hmm. And when I come back, I'm thinking to myself, things are going to change. And I think it's God saying, uh, JC, you're, I brought you here to open your eyes that you could lead your family to some change because there's got to be some change. And if it means curtailing some of the screens, if it means to uh, simplify even more than what we've done, then that's what it means. Because really, is there anything, uh, is there anything that costs more than the gospel? I heard a I heard a uh, uh, teacher say say this one time. He said, "What can you name one thing that that uh, that somebody has done for you more than Jesus?" And obviously, no. You can't come up with anything. I mean, a new job? No. That I mean, you could have a new job, and tomorrow you could be fired. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is that Jesus paid it all for us, and that is. The bottom line is not just living for now, but an eternal life, and that's what uh, the Apostle Paul was saying to the Corinth church. He was saying, "Don't look at these things that are temporal; they're gonna they're gonna go." But it's the eternal aspect of it, and that's it, and that's the souls, and that's and that's always been my heart. That's why I got. That's why I'm in the ministry. You know, uh, meeting these with love, saying, "Hey, I want to uh, see souls." Jesus basically said, seek and save that which is lost. I want to see souls restored, redeemed, and uh, coming to know Jesus. Absolutely. And um, I kind of, I did a video for, for your missions team at your church it's getting ready to go to right. Guatemala. And I kind of want to touch on one of the points I made there. And that is um, to know the value mm -hmm. of what we're doing. And, and by that, I mean twofold. Uh, two different things, and that's uh, I mean, it costs money, right? To this trip, we're spending money to go more than just time, right? Uh, we're not at home, but uh, you know, we're making just a little sacrifice on our part compared to sure. what these guys, you know, a hundred years ago, yeah, were getting on a right. boat and they couldn't FaceTime their family when they made it there. No, no you kidding. know, you know, there's some hardcore people, so it feels like a little bit now we have it easy, right? But you know, we're spending a lot of money, and we could send that money to a missionary. Um, you know, a naysayer might say, why don't you just send money to a missionary and they can build a house with the money that you're spending for you. And that, that's kind of one of my point, it points is, hey, you know the value. So because if you have something that's valuable, you treat it different than something that you would just throw in the trash. Right. So we want to treat this trip, any missions we go on, w like it's worth something because it is a lot. We're spending money, but it's worth even more than that because... You know, we we're, we want to go and help other people. That's the goal is to to take you know make Jesus famous. I mean, that's that's the whole yeah. the whole point is to to share His love and be an example and whatever that means. It looks different in different countries. You know, a poor country you um, you may feed them because they'll say, "I can't hear you telling me about Jesus over the sound of my stomach growling." You know, right? And uh, and I'm a big old boy, so I, <laughs> I definitely understand not being able to concentrate if I'm hungry. You know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in a first world country, it might look totally different. People uh, abandon them. Or, you know, I've been over in Asia and, you know, you have um, um, 
just that pride and uh, the family honor and if you do anything wrong like you're you're an outcast and you've shamed the family and very high suicide rates and stuff so right. missions look different in different countries but um, the value of it is not just going to help there but to see that change in ourselves right because it's just as much about us as it as is as, yeah whoever we're going to impact you know that's why I always tell people I encourage people to to journal to write down what what is God telling you and um, if you're seeing anything you know stick out to you and highlight it you know mental highlight or write it down or um, just see what you come back with because it's valuable not just to the people you're going but it's going to change your life personally and right. when you get back you have it's like fire, you know, you spread fire by taking fire and touching it to other things, you know. Right. Everything you touch when you get back is going to be influenced by influence. you yes. being changed by this right. opportunity and this, this uh, mission, you know, that we're on. You know, I wanted to interject something because you brought up a, a very good point. I've read David Platt's books, uh, Radical, Follow Me, and Counterculture, and in two of those books, he makes that, he makes that point real clear. He, he writes and says, uh, well, you know, that's the conversation he has with people. And they say, you know, $3,000 to fly to so-and-so. Uh, wouldn't that be better if you just sent the money and helped them dig a well or whatever? And he had that in the back of his mind as he went to Africa. In one of his books, he talks about this. And he says he was visiting a gentleman there in Africa. And he had brought that conversation he had with that person in, in church back at the States. And... The person said, the, the guy he had a conversation with said, you know, sure, the money would be great. He said, but you being here is more important because there's always, we know you're with us in our time of, of trials. You always want somebody with you when you're facing your storm and facing your test. And I think, well, I've always said, Brandon, I've always said, we should never let our past experiences form theology. And this is where people stop from not going. Mm -hmm. They they think to themselves, well, it's easier for me or, or I've heard of bad experiences or the, the fear factor, or whatever it may be, and they formed a theology. And this is where, this is why we have missions, world missions. And it's a shame, but this is why we have it, is because uh, people stop in their tracks and they say, it, it's not for me, and I just rather you know send money, and they form their own theology, and they say, well, it's too dangerous, and all these other things, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible, I, I've read the Bible so many times, I've read over seven translations of the Bible all the way through, and I've never found one place that says back up because of fear. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it say, well, don't do it because you know this your job is more important or whatever. He commissions us to go. And you say, well, I'm not a preacher. Doesn't matter. All of us may not be called to preach, but all of us are called to reach. Yeah, I do videos. You know, yeah, I do so. photography and you know, whatever God and has. God built you. He created you with a purpose. The things you like, the things you enjoy, the ultimate purpose is to praise Him and to go into all the world and reach people for Christ. You're a part of the Great Commission. That's why we are created. So you think, if I also like sewing stuffed animals together, and I'm also called, as a Christian, I'm commanded that you're a part of it. All right. right, now what? Right. So how do I do that with what God called me to do? Because <laughs> he created you. Sure. So find out why he gave you these, these uh, you know, things that you like to do, and how you can put that to use to put right. it to work you know and I'm not saying everybody should go you sure. know and I understand I understand the thought pattern but, but you can't use that to let you not that's go. right that's the thing we form theology saying that based it on based it on that and we can't do that um, so you know my thinking about about all this you know you're talking about well, what were some of the things that's been going through your mind and what are some of the, the you talked about the value and that is very important. When I saw your video the first time and you sent it to me uh, via the Dropbox and, and my phone, mm -hmm. I when I went through that, I said, he is so right. The value of, know your value, know your value. And I think sometimes we 
kind of guess what the value might be, but I think we should know what the value is. And the only way to know the value is to actually go and to, to experience it. And see it. And see, see it, it for yourself. And then you'll you appreciate, mm-hmm. you know. Um, other than other than lining some things out in my life, I think God is going to say, see this, see how they see how they are, are, you know, going their everyday routine and how life is so much different. And look at your life now. And what are some changes, JC, that your family can make? What are some things that maybe you could cut back on and uh, less going out to eat or whatever it may be and putting money toward the missions? What are some of those things that you can make those adjustments? And I'm sure that's that's going to be a, a crucial point that yeah. he's going to make. Uh, but one of the things is, where do I go from here? Right. So what now? What? How, well, there you go. <laughs> How do I translate what, what has been said in my life? Um, you know, the opportunity for me to preach, and I'm really excited about that. Yeah, but, next su- next Sunday you'll be in a church, and, and yeah. will you be first time with a translator? Very preaching? first time with a translator. So that's going to be awesome. It's real, uh, I, I think so. I've been going over it through my mind, and that, that yeah. brings some some anxiety, too, because uh, my style of preaching, I've been, I've been preaching for 25 years, and I celebrated it last, what is this, July? So I celebrated it last month. Uh, June, I think it was June thirteenth. I was I accepted a call to preach, and preached my first message a week later, and so uh, I think that that's going to be a little bit. I got a little nervous about it, not so much anxiety, but a little nervous because I. It's not so much of my uh, outline that I have. It's 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 the you know the meat of the message. Am yeah. I getting my point across? Am I being heard? Uh, so I have all these I have all these reservations because I've sat in church before when evangelists have come through and I've developed my own opinion about evangelists and I'm thinking I know how that is in the American church sure well how's this going to be in a Honduras you know or even in a Malawi or wherever we go how am I going to be received yeah you know and that's that's my you know, I guess that would be my second thing. Well, let, let me encourage you in, in that. And also, it kind of goes back to the value thing. Um, something that I've seen traveling. Um, that Spending that money and that time and, de- and traveling that great distance gives you the opportunity that somebody across the street doesn't necessarily have. Because I remember <laughs> in, in, in Haiti... We were walking around doing, you know, talking to people on the street, going house to house, and this old lady, and um, um, I was with the pastor, and she's like, <laughs> she's like, oh yeah, I know, I know, I need to be in church, I know I do the right do thing, I'm just waiting, waiting for a sign. <laughs> oh wow! I told the pastor, I, I told the translator, I said, tell her what about someone coming from a whole other country, there you go, spending a lot of money, huh. they end up in your little village. Not even in the main city, and they come to your doorstep right. to, to talk to you personally. Yeah, is that not a sign from God? Right. So there's value. These people will receive you well because they're, you're you're coming from another country <laughs> and you travel a long way. <clears throat> you choked up, but it's really important for you to know that there is value in that as well because that automatically gives you a platform of. This man came from another country to talk to us. He's in our little village. He's in our congregation. What in the world has he come this far that God has told him he feels passionate enough about it right. to tell us? Right. And I guess, like I said, you know, when you when you go to church all your life in the United States, it's usually what is what is he or what is she going to say that hasn't already been said? Yeah. You know, and I understand the personality uh, dynamic of ministry, and everybody's different, and people operate in the gifts, and people do other things, and are musically talented and, and such. And for me, I, I that's that was the reservation I have, and I'm glad you said some of the things you said because it's helped. It's helped. It, help, it will help me. Yeah. Uh, but I'm thinking, am I going to say? Am I going to say something that is going to be life changing for them? I dare not, and my biggest, I guess you could say fear, I don't 
I'm not confessing fear by any any means, but would be, I don't want to say anything that's going to hurt someone. Yeah. You know, uh, because I don't know personality. You know, I read in one uh, website that you know laughter. In, in joking and cutting up, yeah. some of that's not, you know... Well, it's even the so, sense of humor is, right. may not translate well, and, you know? Yeah, and, and absolutely. And I am a Yeah, we like to goof guy. off. And I, yeah. I, loved, I love life, and I love to goof off, and I love to... Both of our fun. wives have rolled their eyes in the back right. of their head so many times. Many times, yeah. yeah and that's not because, of the demonic, <laughs> it's not because of demonic possession. It's just because they're... Crazy husbands, They're tired yeah. of their husbands. Yeah, here we go again. Uh but see, that's that's the kind of the the thing, and I want to be able to, you know, I'm praying, and I'm I've been been praying for a long time, Brandon, and I want to be able to say the right things and do the right things, and and if and I know it's a cliche, but if one life is touched, yeah, it's all worth it. It's all worth it to me. Yeah. One well, life. you touch one life, and it's again, it's like that fire. You're transferring fire. The one can go to the other, the other and the other. How do you get on fire? You hang around with people that are on fire. Right. You, you're gonna. It's like we said. We we were sitting at that dinner table just talking missions, and the stories just lit us both up. Like right. one just one person just lit two people up, and we're ready to right. go. And then we're talking to people, and hopefully, people listening to this podcast will be and that's, in, you know that's, just catch a little little flame and, and let it let it burn up and right be inspired to do something that's and what that's, that's my, why I want to do this is go. to inspire people to action that's me to do and that's it. my point that you know I was talking about what what do I do now yeah where do I go from from here from this point now yeah you know what do we do and so we have some things in store I mean our church and we've been doing this it's something the Lord has put on my heart and uh, we're re- very active in fact next week while I'm in Honduras our, our home uh, missions uh, is going to be involved in a street reach, and uh, it's called Healing for the Hood, and they're going to do it right on a corner, uh, right down the road from where the young man was shot and killed mm-hmm. when you were when you came. Yep. Uh, so they're going to do something there that day, and I think that's great, you know, but this is an opportunity for us to even broaden our vision and say, hey, you know, uh, I, I also think, and I really think that what I learn from off the mission field is going to help me reach my own community. It's going to give me ideas to, to, to be able to reach the ones that, you know, yeah should be reached. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like it causes you that focus when you're in this other place. So you can bring that focus back right. home. And, and obviously how do I we have it again? Yeah, obviously I don't have, I haven't had that yet. I haven't had that experience yet. So, yeah. um, I'm kind of I'm, I'm yeah. I'm excited forward. to see what what you well, think. And uh, I think that's, that's the first yet. thing you said to me too. You said um, I'm really excited to see how you react because yeah. you've known me for a while. I guess what 2001. Yeah. yeah. So you know, 15 years you've known me for a long time. So you know, you were there at the birth of my first son Levi. Uh, well, there uh, uh, during that time, and uh, so you've seen my life transition, and I've watched your life transition. And now you're going to get to see, you know, me at the infant stage of, <laughs> yeah. of, of this new, and I don't, I'm not going to say new because it's always been a part of my heart, always been part of my life, even since I was a child. Uh, my grandmother Brown, I don't know if I ever told you this, Brandon, my grandmother Brown, a pastor, when we did her funeral, she, she was 92 years old when she passed away. Uh, she was a widow for the majority of her life. I know she was a widow for, my mom was so, so I know over 50 years. Uh, never had her driver's license, had 12 children, uh, and raised all those children, plus the children's children, you know, did all that. And when we were spending weekends all the time at her at her house, and all of us cousins, so there's six of us. Uh, but she would be in her little bedroom on an old Singer sewing machine, the one with the pedal, and the metal wheel that you spin, mm-hmm. and she was making clothes and making things for the world missions. And uh, the pastor said at her funeral that every that her her things that she made had went to almost every nation in the world. Wow! And she had done this for years and years and years, and never left her bedroom to go to the mission field. Absolutely, but she it takes it people like that. It and takes it. 
somebody had said somebody had said they were in another country and they came across one of her little things that she had put a scripture on and they recognized it and they knew that was from her and I think that's just amazing <laughs> that you is. Know? now her grandson has an opportunity to go you know and and uh, be present yeah <laughs> where she didn't she may have been the world's she may have been a mother Teresa we never know yeah but she she reached you know and only only on going on I think it was four hundred dollars a month from Social Security. So when I and I tell people when I speak at churches very rarely, but when I do, I tell them you know not everybody's supposed to go, but everybody is a part of this. You have a part to play, you know. Um, one of the churches um, that support Heart Tongue Productions, their their ladies group um, sews these handmade stuffed animals. It reminds me of your grandma. You telling me that. Um, and we're actually taking a hundred of them right. to Honduras with us, right. and uh, it's uh, maybe seem like a little thing. It means a lot to that kid who maybe never had any any toy at all. But more than that, that is the door. That is your gateway. Like, why are you giving me this? To a kid, it's almost the same as like you preaching to these adults. It's like, why are you here? Why did you come all this way to give me a stuffed animal? Because I want you to know that somebody cares about you. I care about you. God loves you. You know, that if that's your pathway to changing the world. And somebody that never left their home chair, their rocking chair, helped make that possible. Helped right. give you a door to walk through right. to somebody you never even knew before mm -hmm. in a whole different country. Right. So I always tell people, uh, I forget the, the verse right off the top of my head, but, you know, it talks about the, the body of Christ and we all play our parts and important you can't the hand can't say to the eye you know right. i don't need you right like we need every single part like i can't go without the churches and individuals that support me all these other missionaries that i go to help they are only there because people are sending them actively saying i'm gonna set aside whatever part of my income i'm gonna set aside so much of my time to pray to make stuffed animals to be a part of the mission, right. which is the Great Commission, right? and to be an active part of that. We are a team, no matter what part you play in it. You know, I, I like my eyeballs and my fingers and my toes, you know, every bit. I don't want to lose any of it. I want all of it mm -hmm. together, you know, and so that's, that's missions in a nutshell right. to me. So anyway, I know we got to wrap this up. We're, we're going. Well, I was just going to say one more little thing. Yeah, when I was... Uh, when I, I was talking about being accepted to call to preach, I was 19 mm -hmm. years old, and it was, I believe it was like June 13th or something, maybe a little, a little earlier. Uh, but I remember when I was accepted through, a, a, a prophet actually gave a word over me, mm -hmm. and I knew already in my heart that I was called to do something for God, whether it was preach or whatever. At that time in my life, I knew that. But then it was confirmed through a prophet, and they gave me a scripture that I used to hang on my wall when I was a little kid. Uh, I was 12 years old, and it was a little mouse that had tripped over a goal line. He had a football helmet on, and the, and the football had fell over. But anyway, it was on a, on that little plaque I hung on my wall. It said, "I can do all things through Christ which strengthens mm, me." Yeah, and I think that's the bottom line. If you're if you're listening to this and you're like me and you're just beginning to go, or if you're a seasoned missionary, that's the bottom line in my perspective. Is that we can do all things through Christ with strength in us. Whatever we do, I believe He can give us the strength, and He will give us the strength. And and if we'll if we'll, you know, understand faith and understand Him and understand the value that uh, God is just going to honor us and bless us. Absolutely. Well, we leave at what six in the morning tomorrow. Are you ready? You ready to go? Uh, Airport. Everything packed. Everything's. Uh, I pretty well packed everything as tight as I could and done everything according to code and uh, just look forward to hoping to get on that plane and fly and get there. Yeah. And start start a new a new area of my life that it's that hasn't been fulfilled yet. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And we'll uh, again we'll do another podcast. We may do one there and then one when you get back or maybe yeah. just one when you get back. We'll see. Yeah. And, I, and, it's, and, and, you know, we're both going to Malawi, Africa. Yep. So yep. In September. To me, I guess this is a test run. <laughs> yeah. 
There are no tests for that. This is the real deal. <laughs> this, okay. this is the real deal. I don't know if that was going to be good enough. This all is right. getting your feet wet. This, this is your first experience. and I'm all in. All right. I'm all in. Thanks for listening to our podcast. We hope you join us next time. We'll continue this journey on our missions and just see where it leads. I'm looking forward to it.